Good day, Church Fellowship, and welcome back to the LJCC update for the week of Thursday, January the 7th. Hope you have been safe and blessed as Christmas and New Year's are now behind us. At least uh, they're behind us for most of you. Uh, we still have a little Christmas to go. Thanks for your response to the, and many responses to the virtual caroling that we did before Christmas. If you haven't seen it yet, go to our YouTube page and I think you'll be able to find it under, and just search for caroling. I, I know you'll be blessed by that even at this late date. I wanna to continue to say thank you for your help. Again, we've uh, had a time where, where the Sunday after Christmas and the first Sunday of the year, uh, folks have been in and out a lot, but as we're all kind of getting back into town and back into our routine, I wanna to continue to thank you for the way that you have uh, blessed our efforts to assemble uh, as each of you are following appropriate protocols. Uh, to reduce our risk of infection when we gather together here at the church. Again, I would remind you, it is not about protecting yourself. We're not doing this to protect ourselves or because we're afraid. But instead, it is more about doing what, what I can do to protect others and what you can do to protect others, even right here at church. So please don't get tired of doing those things. As a quick reminder, uh, again, you're expected to take your temperature before you arrive for services. And if you have over 99.5 to stay at home, if anyone in your group has temperature like that, you all need to stay at home. Again, we ask that you wear your mask as you arrive and that you would have your mask on anytime you're not in your seats, even if you get up to go out for something and particularly to be aware that your children uh, need to be monitored in that way. Uh, anybody over five years old probably ought to have a mask on. Also, when you come in, there's hand sanitizers at several places. Please clean your hands as you, as you get here. Uh, that'll be good for all of us as well. But above all else, thanks again for uh, being part of the team that has made this a good and healthy place to be. So we have some things coming up as the new year gets started. First of all, our regular Sunday morning and Wednesday night Bible classes. In addition to our services on Sunday morning, our Bible classes will be getting back into their regular team this week, this Sunday starting the 10th, and then a Wednesday night things going on on the 13th. Parents, really great things are going on, particularly in our kids' classes on Sunday mornings. Uh, if, if I just want to encourage you, this is just such a, you know, again, a great time of year to kind of get started with new things and to renew our efforts for the good things that we've always been participating in. And I just encourage you that extra hour that you need to get up to get your kids here for Bible class is a, a small investment with an eternal reward and just such great things going on. Our teachers are well prepared. The material is terrific. And your kids will be loved on and have a great experience that they'll connect with who God is and His love for them for years and years to come. Sunday, in fact, the last few Sundays, we've been making you aware that this spring we're going to spend some time um, investing in discerning and identifying new men to be shepherd elders for us. Uh, we want you to be in prayer about that and opening your heart up to that. Uh, but particularly, uh, this Sunday we'll begin a series of sermons that are intended to kind of talk about leadership generally, but it'll have specific application. And then on the 17th, next Sunday, we will start a combined adult Bible class, 930 on Sunday mornings, which will be, uh, we'll able to do a little bit more dialogue and be a little more specific about leadership that we're talking about for our elders and shepherds also. Our life groups are going to be doing a curriculum and, and again, it's just going to be a very unique opportunity to have your questions asked, answered and asked and uh, have an opportunity to dialogue with people about how they see some of the issues that surround uh, looking for and identifying um, and asking God to help us uh, discern uh, additional men to lead us as shepherd elders. Please be prayerful about, uh, we announced on Sunday, and again, this is an annual thing. Please be prayerful about your giving. Uh, you have been so generous this year and we're so thankful, but this is the time of year, January, February, and March, when we reset our budget. We don't, we don't make any plans to spend any more 
then you, the congregation, uh, are uh, willing to donate. We ask, of course, that the Spirit would intervene in your heart and your mind to think about how you want to give and what you want to give. Um, but I, I really want to encourage you to be prayerful about that process unfolding, um, maybe this year particularly, because last year we were, did it mostly before most of this pandemic started. Now we have the opportunity to kind of step forward and look forward to the year where, um, because of vaccines and herd immunity, we're hopefully going to be able to really engage a little bit more and be together a little bit more. So again, thank you for your generosity in the past. And thank you ahead of time, because I know you've always been generous at this time of year. Also, we're really excited to announce um, January for the last few years has been our month where we have our mission emphasis has been our pregnancy help center here in our local area. We do it in this month because they have traditionally had a big banquet every year that they do a lot of their annual fundraising out of. Well, of course, with COVID, things are going to be a little bit different with that. There's still going to be a banquet, but the attendance has to be much lower because of the spacing requirements there. And so they have asked, and we have agreed, and we're not the only church in the area, but they did ask us, and we have agreed, our elders have agreed for us to host a virtual Pregnancy Help Center program, and we're going to have dessert with it. Um, plan on Friday, January the 29th. You need to know that there will be pretty strict limited space. So Sunday morning, you'll be able to reserve your seats starting that Sunday. It's an exciting year. Uh, they always have great speakers, but this one would be one that you probably would know. Pam Tebow, Tim Tebow's mother. Uh, if you don't know her story, basically the doctors told her that Tim was not going to be a viable baby and encouraged her to abort him. And her testimony is really, really wonderful. As we head into our time of prayer, we have several things we want to be thankful for. April Lubke is uh, continuing to get significantly greater hearing gain following her inner ear surgery. And although there was some complication with some taste uh, nerves uh, in that process, that is slowly coming back as well. And so I got a really celebratory message from Corliss this week, and I wanted to share that with that good news with you. Uh, most of you know that Betty Stark is back home, improving, recovering from, and therapy going on in her home as she recovers from her hip surgery. If you want to help, there's uh, instructions in the caring and sharing about a meal train for Betty, and I know that she would appreciate it, and you'd be blessed by that. Also, Orly Nockin went in for back surgery back in December, and she is back home, and she is doing well. Uh, Sherry says she's really uh, doing quite well. We're also thankful that Joanne Philo has gotten good reports, is completely done with her chemo. The, heard just today that the mass in her spleen has reduced significantly, but the surgery to remove her spleen is scheduled for January the 27th. Joyce Lewis let us know that her nephew, Dave Newberry, who had several, back in the fall, several emergency uh, uh, brain surgeries, is doing much better. He's at home, has to use a walker, but uh, they see this as good news that he's not expected back for any more procedures for another three months or so. So we'll pray that this time of rest and recovery will be filled up with good things. Also, if you were here Sunday or if you were listening, you heard that uh, Jeff uh, heard, heard Craig announce that we've heard from Jack and Bernice Skinner. Bernice has now, uh, if she's not at home right now, she's getting there as quickly as possible. And home at this point is in the Metroplex with her kids and just significant recovery as far as that's concerned. We do have a, quite a long list of prayer needs that we want to update you on. Jeff announced to us back in December that he was going to be undergoing prostate surgery, and that surgery is scheduled for this Friday, January the 8th, so we want to remember him in prayers. Sylvia Haro has earnestly been asking for her prayers as uh, for about six weeks now, Israel. Uh, Jimenez has been in UTMB Galveston and they diagnosed, as I think we've announced, that he has Hodgkin's lymphoma. He remains at UTMB. Uh, they are doing some treatments. Uh, things seem to turn a, a positive corner, uh, but they're really hoping to get up to MD Anderson. And, and so she asks us to pray for that and pray for them as they go through this time of struggle. 
Linda Hickel's mom, Carlita Mulkey, I believe uh, would probably have heard Bill and broke her hip uh, back in December. Uh, she has now tested positive for COVID. It's really sad about that. Frank and Linda are in Idaho as we speak to, to care for her. Ronnie Mullins, uh, we wanna pray for him as he's experiencing some pretty significant abdominal pains. Um, they, he's gone in for some testing to see if it's related to his gallbladder or whatever else is going on. Got an update on D Rambo. Again, he continue, can still, continues to battle stage four prostate cancer, but he was blessed uh, to be strong enough to be with his family at Christmas. Uh, Nelda let us know that he's now doing some uh, oral chemo and that that's much better than having to go to the hospital for infusions, so we're thankful for that. We also are keeping up with Maria Vargas. Uh, she's expected to have another surgical procedure, I believe next week, that's connected with her fight with cancer. Meg Scott continues to ask for our prayers, her lung issues, and, and again, adjusting to this new uh, time in life. Raymond Waddy, knee surgery that was supposed to be back in December has been rescheduled for January. We don't have an exact date. And again, he asked that we continue to remember Rosalind who's dealing with back pains. Chelsea Miller, um, Jerry and Arlene's daughter-in-law, uh, is still struggling with these abdominal pains and they really don't have any answer. They have ruled out gallbladder and, and now they're awaiting more testing. And I know that she and the family would appreciate your prayers. Allie Wade, who we prayed about, young lady who was paralyzed from a fall, uh, is at Texas Children. She's gonna be there for the next few months undergoing treatment. If you would like to know how you might get help in that situation, be in touch with Randy and Sandy Moore. Also, Sue Talbot. Uh, Joe Talbot's brother, Dan's wife, Sue Talbot, they're members at the Downing Wilkins Church in, Church in Angleton. Um, she has pretty advanced stage four lung cancer. And uh, Dan called me this week and asked specifically for our prayers. As far as our COVID stuff, again, it can, seems to be around every corner these days. Um, We'll just update you that the Stewart family, Savannah has tested positive, but Sean and the boys are all uh, pretty sick. At least they were at the beginning of the week. We hope that they're getting better. Terry German let us know that his brother in Oklahoma, Terry, uh, uh, sorry, excuse me, Troy, uh, was diagnosed with COVID and, and even developed COVID pneumonia, had to be sent, uh, went in the ER and has been sent home and to be on oxygen. We hope that he'll recover. Doris Ammons, uh, Mike Wunderlich brought her up to us. She was, is a, an older lady who was already in rehab for uh, hips or recovering from hip surgery. And she has also been diagnosed with COVID. And uh, our friend from Belton, Mel Kelder, uh, is still struggling to stabilize. We're really thankful they've chosen to step away from the therapy in the hospitals and are now back home in Belton and uh, just doing the best they can at this point. Got several birthdays that we wanna, we're gonna go backwards a little bit. We're not gonna get everybody since the last announcement, but uh, back on December the 29th, Zoe Hunter, uh, Hunt, not Hunter, Zoe Hunt uh, had a birthday. And last Monday, December the 4th, Charlie Crest and Kevin Hunter had birthdays. Uh, tomorrow, Friday, January the 8th, Manuel Chacon will have a birthday. And then Saturday the 9th, Brian Frazier. Then Monday the 11th, January 11th, Arlene Miller has birthday. Then on Tuesday, January 12th, both Gary McBrayer and Mark Davis have a birthday. And then Wednesday, next Wednesday, January the 11th, Lisa Hewitt has birthday. Today, we want to celebrate with Alex Abney and Hutch, Hutch Hewitt for their birthdays here on the 7th. We have some anniversaries, and again, we're going to go back a, a bit. Steve and Kathy Davis celebrated an anniversary on December the 18th. The Bryants, the Egglestons, and the Eves all had anniversaries on December the 22nd, popular day, it seems. Carrie and Helen Cole celebrated their anniversary on December the 21st. What a fun day to have a wedding. And Zane and Deborah Lee, also a fun day to have a wedding anniversary on December the 31st. Finally, I want to just be sure you're aware that Peter Hunt, uh, following a family trip to Atlanta area to be with Lisa's family, 
is now in Florida uh, at the National Conference on Youth Ministries. It's a conference I went back to, went to back 20 years ago, and my kids have attended uh, recently. Great conference. Want to ask that you would uh, lift him up and pray that he's learning lots of good stuff and that God is really building up and refreshing and renewing him through that process. And of course, safe journey back home when he picks up Lisa and Zoe. And as classes are getting started this week, let's be sure that we keep all our teachers and our students uh, in our prayers. Our teachers are just going to extraordinary efforts and I'm sure having kind of had a break for a couple of weeks that it's tough to get started again, but I, I'm just always blessed and impressed at how hard they work and how uh, much they give themselves to, to helping and being good teachers and representing God in the way that they are good teachers. So as we close out, let's, I would ask you that you join with me in a brief prayer. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you uh, for these people that we've celebrated their birthdays and these, uh, the witness of these anniversaries. We're thankful for the people that you bless us with and we're thankful again for the testimony of those anniversaries. Father, we want to give you great thanks for the great report that April Lubke had, that Betty Stark is home and, and doing well in her recovery, that Oralene Nochran seems to be doing well. We want to thank you for the good news that Joanne Fillows had, and we pray for the surgery that will come and that this will rid her of all cancer and that she never has to look back over her shoulder concerned about that at all. We want to lift up Dave Newberry, and we're thankful that think good things are going on there. And finally, we just really celebrate with Jack and Bernice. This said it's such a long journey and we're thankful that they are kind of coming to this next and hopefully a continual improvement from here on in. Father, we want to lift up Jeff Pauls and Paula Roper. We want to lift up Ronnie Mullins and Carlita Mulkey. We want to lift up Raymond and Rosalind Waddy. We want to lift up Dee Rambo, Ralph Knockin, we want to lift up Candy Crest and Meg Scott. We want to lift up Kelly McCoyle and Israel Jimenez. We want to lift up to you Ron and Nora McDaniel and Nell Brown and Helen Cole. We want to lift up Dan and Sue Talbot, Sue Talbot particularly. We want to lift up Pat Moss and Chelsea Miller and Allie Wade, Nina Voigt, Maria Vargas. We want to lift up Edna Allen and Maggie Stroman, David Taylor, Lydia Thomas, Carolyn Hunter, April Barton, William Hickel, Danny Bice. Father, we want to lift up those that, that we're aware of um, that are struggling with COVID, the Stewart family, Troy German, Dora Sammons, and again, Mel Kelder. We pray for your healing in all those situations and that they can recover fully. Father, we lift up our healthcare workers, we lift up our teachers, and we lift up our first responders. And finally, Father, we lift up baby Allie Kalen to you. We pray all these things in your son's name and we all say, amen, amen. Thanks for listening. Looking forward to seeing you on Sunday.